welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you a video tutorial of how I will be seaming my unda cowl. So I've got it right here. I haven't seamed it yet. So as you can see, it looks a lot like an asymmetrical triangle shawl. This is my absolute favorite shawl shape. But because I used DK weight yarn and only two skeins total, so I used one skein for the main color, which is this gorgeous turquoise color by Savvy Skeins. And then the contrast color is by Hugh Loco in the mulberry color. So this is um, called Psychedelic, the turquoise is. So, you know, it's not very big, right? So if I tried to wear it like a shawl, it just is not gonna stay around my neck. It's just not. So what we're going to do is seam it together so that when you're wearing it, it will look like you're wearing an asymmetrical triangle shawl, but it's super easy to just throw on over your head and it'll stay in place styled exactly the way you want it to. Okay, so I'm going to show you step by step how I'm going to seam it. And if you're looking at the pattern with me, um, I have a link in the description to see the pattern if you actually want to get it yourself. We're going to start with the cast on edge, which is here. This is where you cast on your stitches. You're gonna take about four inches or 10 centimeters of this, and we're going to seam it to four inches or 10 centimeters of your bind off edge, which is here, okay? The increase edge, so this is the edge where all the increases were made, that's gonna be around your neck, okay? And this will make it so that the these kind of brioche faux cables will cascade beautifully down as you wear it. Okay, so I'll show you in more detail now from top view of my hands. All right, before we get started, I want to show you what tools I have, okay? So I have some safety pins of different sizes. I have my sharp scissors, and in my cute little cat case are my tapestry needles. So I'm going to use kind of a larger tapestry needle that has a larger opening because this is a DK weight yarn. And those are really all the tools that you'll need to seam this together. I mean, honestly, you might not even have to pin your um, ends together. But let me just, before I start... This is the cast on edge of the cowl, okay? So this is where you're casting on the stitches, and this is my end that I left after casting on. I left an extra long end. I think in the pattern I call for about 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters, but I think I might have left a little bit longer. I actually had to wet splice this together because I originally didn't leave a long end. So you can do that as well. If you found that you didn't have a long enough end, you can always use extra yarn or wet splice them together, okay? So this is the about four inches right here of the cast on edge and part of the cowl setup. Okay, so you can see this is where I've increased my edges to create this shape. Okay, so from about here to here, this is where we're going to be seaming. And if you're taking the other edge, so let's look at the other end. Okay, so this is the edge where all of the increases happened to create the shape. And then this is the edge that was bound off. So we're going to take approximately four inches starting here. So this is the right edge and going about four inches across, we're going to match 
these two edges to seam them. But what we want to do is put our contrast sides together. So this is the main side, okay? So that's where you can see the, the kind of faux cables the most. And then this is the contrast side. Okay, so what I wanna do is when I seam it, I want this beautiful selvage edge to be on the outside of the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take if you want, you can get a ruler out. I'm just going to eyeball it till about here. And I'm going to match it up with the, the point. So this is the bind off point where you started binding off. And I'm going to match it there. I'm actually going to pin mine together just to make sure that it stays in place. So feel free to do this too. I'm just using safety pins because they, they stay put so easily. So starting about four inches across, or kind of if you see there's kind of a dip in the fabric, pin that together. And we're going to be seaming this selvage edge. We're going to be working the mattress stitch under this selvage edge. And we're going to be working the mattress stitch under, this is the bind off edge. Okay, so I've actually already put my yarn kind of on the on the contrast side so I'm just going to pin this here so what I want to do is I want to start kind of with this bind off edge so I pin that together so that's nice it'll stay put because basically what you want to do so this is going to be kind of around your neck. This is the circumference that's around your neck. And what you want to create is kind of like a collar, if that makes sense. So like this would be at the back of your neck and then this would be open. So I hope that makes sense. So like this is the opening around your neck that you would put over your head. And then this would be at the back of your neck, this depth here. Okay, so I'm gonna take my tapestry needle. Let me put my glasses on. Take my tapestry needle and thread the yarn through. So it's already on the inside or the contrast side of my cowl. So what I want to do is I want to go underneath this stitch here. Okay, so this is the bind off stitch. I'm going to go underneath that, pull my yarn through and then kind of go around the outside and go underneath this other bind off stitch. Okay, so it'll kind of hide the, the stitching here. And then this is a salvage stitch right here. We're gonna go, or this is actually the cast on edge. We're gonna go under this stitch and go around and under this stitch. And you'll just continue that way. So we're gonna go back under this stitch, around, through, under this stitch. And you'll just continue this way through the whole edge so that when you're done, it'll be this beautiful kind of um, seam here on the back of your neck, which will look so gorgeous. kind of cheat and you know go in multiple stitches you just want to make sure that when you go through a stitch that there's something for the yarn as you're as you're seaming something for your yarn to grab onto if that makes sense so I'm going under this one. So you can see this is the yarn I'm talking about right here. So that's kind of grabbing onto that to help keep it together.
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off camera and I'll meet you back at the end to show you how to finish it and weave in your final end to make sure that it stays in your project. Um, you know, and that you never see it again. All right, so I finished seaming it. So this is, this is kind of what mine looks like. I'll take the safety pins out so you can see it without it being warped or anything. So this is how mine looks. I love the mattress stitch because you can still see this beautiful, you know, cast on edge here. You can still see the beautiful seam. And so now what I'm gonna do is just to make sure that this end stays in place, I'm gonna bring it to the contrast side. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I always weave in my ends on the contrast side. I kind of like unplied that yarn a little bit. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna just make sure that this stays in place and I'm gonna just weave it in really, really well. So first I'm putting it kind of through these stitches here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave it in underneath these yarn overs, okay? So these yarn overs here will hide my end very, very well. You can see where I spliced my yarn together right there. So I'm gonna go kind of up and under these yarn overs. Come back down through these yarn overs. And another thing you can do too is kind of go where the seam is. So see this is kind of where the seam is. You could go through those stitches as well. Okay, so yeah, that, that end is gonna stay in there very, very well. Yeah, I got distracted. I was just trying to make sure that it looked the way that I wanted it to. So now I'm just going to Cut this, cut it a little bit longer than I want it to be, and just kind of pull it loosely. And there you have it. So now my cowl is all nicely seamed up. I'm just gonna pull this, maybe trim this a little bit more. So real quick, I actually went back and cleaned up this edge right here, because I didn't like Maybe you noticed there was kind of a, this point was kind of sticking up a little bit. So I cleaned up this edge really well because I wanted it to be more of a seamless look there. So now I can just weave in this end here. And I really like the way that looks a lot better. So there you go. I mean, you know, it's kind of like finessing it and kind of using your, your own eye to make sure that it has a clean look that you want. Okay, so now I'll show you how I style it. Okay, folks, I'm back. Are you so excited? So I seamed my cowl and I just love it. It's so drapey. So because of where I seamed it, now I can just throw it over my head. Just be careful of the hair. And now it just stays on. Totally, you can wear it just hanging down real super drapey. So then the seam would go at the back of your neck. Or 
mine's even wide enough to kind of wrap around my shoulders a little bit. So if it was a little chillier, you know, or you can kind of shift it off to the side a little bit. So yeah, there you go. So effortless and um, so fun. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you if you have knit your own under cowl. And I mean, this tutorial could also be used for a lot of different things, even if you're not making the under cowl. So the pattern can be found at knitgraffiti.com and you can read more about the information there, the yarn I used and the needle sizes, etc. And it can also be found in my Ravelry shop. The links are all down in the profile. And if you like this video, please let me know. And if you do like it, please subscribe. I am definitely trying to make more videos like this and especially from my home studio. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.